Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to what could be the very last game of the day if 100 Thieves wins another one. To the surprise of our analysts on the desk and many people at home, 100 Thieves have come out swinging and lead this series 2-1. to one. And we're in for a spicy finish, no matter what happens. Whether or not TSM is able to pull it back together and win the next two games, or if we see them making a first-round exit from the spring split playoffs yet again. Because if, if you just think about the overall arcs of these teams with 100 Thieves coming into this split and basically saying it's a development run, to then finishing third and then knocking TSM out of the playoffs, that would be an amazing accomplishment. And it would also be a disaster for TSM to lose at this stage. And what the analyst desk said, I thought was completely on point where at least probably said he wants to see Bjergsen take a counter pick because at, at, at some point they have to call their shot and be able to make it. And the shot they've been calling in that last game of let's pick this snowball composition and execute didn't work. So let's just put the, you know, their red side right now for TSM. They chose red side instead of the blue side this game. They're setting up for that final counter pick for Bjergsen who has a really wide champion pool so far this split. Let's see if they can get it done. All right. The bands remain the same for 100 Thieves. Zaya and Syndra will not be allowed onto the rift. Neither will Senna. Aphelios, Orn, and Set banned out by TSM. They don't want to deal with the set. They tried the counter pick last game. It worked in lane. It didn't work later on. 100 Thieves are going to start things off by first picking the Aatrox. So we're not seeing the exact same blue side, red side game we saw the last two times we had 100 Thieves on blue and TSM on red because of the Orn ban. Probably Varus Tom Kench here, just keeping things as standard as possible, but man, TSM left that clock at zero. They, they, were, they were close to not going on that one. A lot of discussion still clearly happening on what TSM want to do here. Kabe on the Varus. Remember that we saw the... Ooh! Zoe! Okay. This has been a second round ban in the previous games. This is also the champion that Niski blasted the entire first series mm -hmm. against 100 Thieves with going up against Ryoma here. I want to see what the Thieves have prepared to deal with this in the way that they weren't prepared when they played Cloud9. They will lock in the Misfortune and the Nautilus yeah. here for the bottom lane yet again. Yeah, I mean, this isn't a counter pick for Bjergsen, but it is still a statement pick for Bjergsen, if that makes sense. Uh, as you mentioned, if you can play like Niski did against Ryoma and Hunter Thieves, TSM would be in for a good time. At this stage as well, they're, they're likely either letting Dardock absorb a lot of bands or they're letting Biofrost absorb a lot of bands. So I think they'll pick support here. Yeah, they Yep. Do. I was fully expecting to see the Tom Kench considering Varus Tom Kench versus MF Nautilus is now going to be the bottom lane matchup. We've seen in three out of four of the games here today. We got it during one and two. We're going to get it again during this game here. So we kind of know how this one plays out. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, uh, in between games, I'm, I'm checking for memes online. There's a lot of them about stunt. Like anytime he sees someone, he's just like asking for that fight. He's just throwing out hooks on cooldown. A lot of times it's actually been working out for him. So no surprises, they're picking the Nautilus again. It's very crucial to the way 100 Thieves has actually been closing out these games is that they have that repeated chase down and really solid initiation of the Nautilus. Yeah, searching for memes is dangerous during this game, though, because if you go anywhere near Twitch chat, it's <laughs> going to be that Zoe copy pasta over and over and over again that gets spammed every time the champion actually gets played. So I'm go we're going to stay away from that this time around and focus on what's <laughs> happening in these solo lane bands here. As Victor's been banned away from 100 Thieves. Remember, Ioma played that last game, had some good Chaos Storms, had con some good control over the team fights. Gragas and Renekton also banned away. Yeah, and looking at what Ryoma ended up playing into the Zoe in the Cloud9 series, he played Cinder one game, that is banned. Uh, in the next game, he played Cinder, obviously it's still banned. And then he tried LeBlanc, which is still open for now. Right. Obviously none of them were that effective for it, but knowing they have the Aatrox top already and a lot of CC, LeBlanc would probably be the thing that Ryoma would fall back on once again. 
If I Relia out of the way now, that ban will not exactly focus on a champion that's played a ton these days, but it is one that we've seen played successfully on the side of TSM before. So 100 Thieves just want to make sure they don't have any sort of pocket pick lined up. And there's something changing things up here a little bit in this series. Rek'Sai locked in for Dardoch. It's really about mid-jungle here. They're hoping to get as much mid to bot pressure as possible with this Rek'Sai pick. Uh, also noting that Gragas was denied overall, so Meteos won't be able to play that this time. Leaves a lot of options open for 100 Thieves here uh, in terms of... They, they, can, they can go for the Orianna. It's going to be... Okay. It's going to be tricky, though. Well, remember that Ryoma's Orianna play was the star of the show in game number two. And the salty run back, that's the one that brought everything to the table. So we'll see how well Ryoma is able to deal with that, Zoe. Thinking about the Elise now to deal with that Rek'Sai. But instead, 100 Thieves decide they are going for Sejuani. Yeah, and I think the Sejuani is a good pick. I also wouldn't have been shocked to see something like Trundle, and here we go. Callista top for Broken Blade. So they played it in the bottom lane in the last game. Now we're gonna get to see the Callista top. So uh, again, we're in a similar situation that many of the previous drafts have left us with, where Hunter Thieves just has a better 5v5. If they can withstand, we know their late game, just mindset-wise, strategy-wise is better. Also their composition. So TSM is putting themselves in a situation here where I feel like they have to slam these lanes. Yeah. Otherwise, that ball of pain that 100 Thieves has drafted would run TSM out of the spring split. Callista top is an absolute nightmare. It makes Vayne top look fun mm -hmm. and interactive for the lane opponent, which Vayne top is not. <laughs> so if for anybody who's not familiar with this, it's very powerful. The first person that I think a lot of people saw playing it successfully was the Shy, who many remember yeah. as an absolute terror of a top laner at international events. And the way that it works is you can invest so heavily into your Q and your E, you don't even have to learn your W early on. So you get to just have more points in your core abilities. Melee champions just have no ability to deal with you because of the infinite mobility and constant dashing. You constantly bully the lane. You shove things up with proper manipulation of your Q and E to both clear waves and carry those spears forward into your opponent for poke damage and big burst and harass. It's just an incredibly powerful top laner that will fall off if the game goes big into team fighting. And I think it's also another signal from TSM that they want to play around topside. It's been something that they've been pretty consistent with throughout most of the series and also did a lot of this year. So, I mean, it's TSM now. They no longer like going by Team Solo Mid. Part of this is why. Like, they're really not <laughs> about just playing around Bjergsen. I, I feel like so much of this split has been an attempted kind of passing of the torch towards Broken Blade's talent. And they're putting it to the test here when it matters most. This is not a utility top laner or a weak side top laner or someone who just sits idly by while they crash bottom lane. This is something I expect them to play through. Frequent ganks. I kind of expect Bjergsen to try and shove Ryoma in and make his way top lane. And it's on Sunday to withstand yeah. whatever Broken Blade can throw at him early on in the game. Because as we mentioned, if we get to 5v5s with even gold, I think Hunter Thieves should be a big favorite. Pincushion role player up against Callista Top here for <laughs> someday. He does have his resolve secondary mastery, so it will provide him with a little bit of extra defensive power up against Broken Blade's Callista. But what you're seeing right now, someday completely zoned off the wave, just trying to last hit with abilities, mm -hmm. is going to be how this lane plays out. The goal is not to win it is just to survive and lose gracefully up against broken blade on this pick see if maybe meteos is able to come up there with the sejuani and help him out because man if meteos is able to get going in this game up against 280 carries up against an enemy jungler that again doesn't have great scaling like a rexai he's going to be a brick wall by the time this game goes late absolutely and pay attention to this early jungle pathing because dardock already with a quick level three is looking and has actually already found Meteos in the jungle. Uh, so trying to take very early control right now because the Callista is so pushed up. And it's 
while it may seem right now like, hey, someday should just collapse down and kill Dardock, it's really hard because there's a large wave of minions that he doesn't want to abandon, which is what's allowing Dardock to play so aggressively in the jungle here. Dardock trying to contest for this wolf. Both junglers have the smite. smite. Nicely done by Dardock there to secure that one. Steal it away from Meteos. Meteos got one of the small wolf puppies, but that's worth 12 or 13 gold. It's not really a big deal. Tricky here. But Bjergsen first to roam here. He had the mid lane control. He had the priority and pressure which means he gets to join this fight. Jerkson fires off the sleeve. Really greedy. Bubble, but he's not going to find the CC down onto Meteos, who does have to try to use the Arctic Assault to get away. Meteos just, man, sticking around way too long. What in the world are you doing there, buddy? Uh, that, that's, I, I've been there as a jungler. Let me tell you, these people are in your jungle. They're sitting in your jungle. You're thinking, no way they can stay in my jungle, really. Uh, but what you should actually do, since camp respawn timers are so short now 120 seconds on both krugs and raptors you just recall like you can lose your buff it's fine the reason i think meteos didn't want to recall is he thinks if he seeds full control then someday dies because that's what the callista rexi is looking to set up because it would be a three-man indefensible dive so he's I think he's trying to buy time for someday to catch a wave. It's still exactly the type of opening the TSM wants, though. Yeah. Getting first blood on a Dardock, maintaining control over that top side, effectively making Broken Blade ungankable, and giving TSM yet another early game lead. Huge early game lead. Over a thousand gold, almost 1.5k, just four and a half minutes into the game. Off of the lane advantages they have, off of that early kill that they got onto Meteos, who now has moved into the enemy jungle to farm up some of those camps. So TSM feeling good about how this one is beginning. But that is something that we've said about previous games as well. It's not just how things start, it's how they end. And for TSM, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that they keep things up going forward. I know it feels a little bit early and a little bit doom and gloom to say, yeah, but don't screw it up, TSM. But this has been the biggest issue for this team. And I'm not saying this to just be like, overly harsh on TSM, this has been the biggest criticism of them the entirety of this split, and it's something they have to be very aware of, as Broken Blade is very aware of exactly oh, how much damage boy. it does to Someday here. Someday flashed away from the Q. He took the damage from the Rend, but not the Q. Could have potentially died there yeah. if not for the Flash. And you can see just the utter pain and sense of helplessness that Someday feels up here, knowing that Meteos has kind of had to leave him since... If Meteos tries to do anything and Dardock meets him in the jungle, Someday is unable to assist. But he's gotten enough CS to pick up a double cloth armor. He was able to teleport. He will likely be able to catch this cannon wave and hit level 6 and kind of get out of one of the most miserable parts of this laning phase. But we're going to have to see. It, another wave is crashing and... Here comes Dardock. Oh, remember, Someday just used his teleport, so if he's taken out here, it is absolute disaster. This is huge. It's Bjergsen making his huge. way over he, as well. He's going to lose this wave. The massive wave. That's two and a half waves worth of minions, including a cannon, denied. It doesn't matter if they get the kill. The sheer amount of gold and experience Someday is losing out on is worth more than a kill on its own. Meteos will escort him back up here to his minion wave. Ah, yes, right this way, sir. You, you have lost your way. The tour is over here now. Just trying to get him back on track as Dardock and the rest of TSM have to disengage this one. So, weirdly enough, that was actually a really big win for 100 Thieves, which is strange to say when they're down 2,000 gold and he still lost some minions because the fact that Stunt was roaming up there means he was still able to hit level 6. If that play goes to plan for TSM, they kill him. And TSM wasn't willing to dive in between turrets because they didn't also have Biofrost on the way. The roam up by Stunt was actually super crucial in keeping this, this hope alive for someday in this lane. Dardock and Broken Blade are doing so well playing around this top side that is just so heavily in favor of TSM. Bramble Vest is going to make it so Broken Blade can't lifesteal infinitely off of auto-attacking yeah. someday. It'll it's it a little bit of damage return as well. It, it's a little bit. It's what you do on Aatrox when you're when you're you're trapped. Uh, what, so what I will say is I want to expand a little bit on what you said earlier about uh, this has been a problem for TSM all year. It's also been a strength for 100 Thieves all year where I feel like most games that go even or late 100 Thieves has been able to 
pull together. So in that way, this is a favorable matchup. 400 Thieves, the drafts have moved more in this direction. And I also want to bring up a stat that Mark mentioned during Countdown. And we also talked about in depth during the podcast is just TSM does win fast when they win. But if they don't win fast, they don't win. <laughs> because yeah. their their average win time was about 32 minutes and their average loss time was about 40 minutes. Normally, when you have that scenario, it's a team that is kind of overperforming because, oh, they win fast. And if they're not winning, they're able to stall the game out. But in TSM's case, if they don't win fast, they themselves bleed out until they lose. And that's actually what we saw in Game 3 against 100 Thieves. It's a little bit of what we saw in Game 2 of this series. And if they lose this one, it would also be how their split ends. So it's really do or die here, as we've been setting up since Champ Select. Can they play around Broken Blade here? Can they keep the pressure up across all three lanes, which is what they're doing? 2,500 gold by 9 minutes is a huge early game lead. But as you mentioned they got to be able to close. Yeah, that stat that you mentioned is funny because of how counterintuitive it is to the norm. Just how TSM falls behind and Bjergsen's able to jump in there, steal that blue buff away. They're not falling behind anytime soon. Two and a half thousand gold ahead at nine and a half minutes into this game. Hundred Thieves are trying to hang on, staunch the bleeding however they can. That's all they can do. As bottom side, that lane is playing out exactly how it did in games one and two with Kabe and Biofrost controlling the 2v2. And that's so good for them considering everybody's playing around the top half instead. Ooh. And Bjergsen is really having a good game so far. Over 100 CS before 10 minutes. Just a 20 CS difference on Ryoma. Basically deletes half of stun and stops him from being able to participate in this Rift Herald. And GSM's going to use this Rift to likely break first turn of the game. Assuming they get the last two well, Sunday's walking up, but I don't think he wants to walk okay. any closer. There's, eh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with no. That's not really a play that you can make anything happen against when you're one versus three. But there are three plates remaining on that top side turret. We'll see if they want to kill that turret with the Rift Herald, or if they just want to keep it alive so Broken Blade can continue bullying Sunday like he is. Dardock will once again smite away an objective that him and Meteos were both next to. Granted, Meteos just got vision of it, so he wasn't quite as prepared as Dardoch was. Dardoch now. Oh, they can get something here. Here comes follow-up damage. Someday going through, but Broken Blade, <laughs> he's got the panic button, and he pulls <laughs> Dardoch to safety. If you thought Callista, if you didn't, oh, man. somehow, if you were one of the people in Twitch chat that somehow didn't think Callista Top was annoying already, let me introduce you <laughs> to point number two. Bailing out Dardock right there after he gets picked in the river. And yep, that's first turret. Full on over to Broken Blade. Now uh, expect him to move bot towards Drake. And TSM will hope to start stacking up these Drakes. Notice that actually they are a little bit slow towards Drake as they have been all year in exchange for gold. 4,000 gold with 11 minutes is just gargantuan. Yeah, you don't normally see these kinds of stats. I remember back in game number one, I said it was pretty incredible that they had a 4,000 gold lead at 15. Well, four minutes earlier than that, and they're hitting the same mark. TSM is doing their darndest to win this game and make sure they take us all the way to game five to get us those silver scrapes and earn their spot above 100 Thieves here. 100 Thieves looking for some vision in the enemy jungle. You can see the Blast Cone being destroyed to prevent some gank paths. Stunt also going to lay down some wards there. You can see pings now from TSM onto the Drake Pit, saying, hey, it's been 12 minutes. We should probably look to invest here. Man, just to, to be in uh, 100 Thieves' head right now, thinking like, okay, when can we actually start fighting back? Because if you fight back at the wrong time, you end up just making matters worse. What TSM wants is they want 100 Thieves to stick their head out to go into this double Blade of the Ruined King 80 carry setup and soon to be Luden's Zoe and just start getting one shot. But at the same time, they're, they're just being destroyed. Like the the bottom lane's got a 20 CS advantage. Bjergsen's got 26. Gonna drop down to about 20 here as Ryoma is able to pick up a wave. But really it's just about like, what does TSM want to do next? And can they make this happen cleanly? Because Hunter Thieves is completely on the defensive. You're talking about 
100 Thieves happen to pop their head up, and you just made me imagine that arcade game. I remember it's got like Weasel Wallop or... Whack-a-mole? Whack-a-mole! That's it. I, I knew I was messing up. I, yeah. I had too much alliteration. Either way, yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? Weasel? Weasel Wallop. Like, or <laughs> weasel Wallop. Because <laughs> you wallop. That's kind of a better name than Whack-a-mole, honestly. Wallop I'd the play Weasel, weasel Wallop. The hammer. Either way, I'm just imagining these poor little Aatrox weasels trying to stick their heads up and grab some farm, and Callista walks up with a big old mallet and wallops them. That's the story of the entire top half of the map here in this game of League of Legends, and it's not changing anytime <laughs> soon. Uh, no, and that's... Let, let's, let's count. That's... Eight plates for TSM to zero of hundred thieves, four and a half thousand gold, one Drake, and more soon. Here we go. See Dardock, you're gonna oh, be in some trouble here. CC dead. coming down, but Biofrost once again, man, always on point with the devourers here for Tom Kench. Stunt trying to disengage. Meteor's gonna be taken down to half HP now as well. Cody Sun moving forward, looking to find the damage. Dardock at 400, but <gasps> oh, Bjergsen, he tried to sneak in there for some extra paddle star, but didn't quite find the kill. Yeah, for some reason, I thought that was going to kill him, so I gave a little gasp, but <laughs> turns out it, it wasn't close. He doesn't have Ludens yet, but uh, yeah, that's just... Dardock, was he able to steal that? No, Meteo secured it, so so far, still more defense as they're now trying to move down for a dive. Yes, I'm just never stopping. Dardock at 400 HP, but remember, he still has the ulti, which is a great aggro drop to prevent him from dying to a turret if they do make a dive happen. And that's it. Second turn of the game over to TSM. 5,300 gold. They get 5,500 now. The tune of the lead here for this team. Yeah. Super impressive first 15 minutes. Yeah, this... This has been total domination from TSM. And if they play cleanly, it's going to just look like a super smooth win from start to finish. And what I say next is going to sound... Like, why do you, why are you even worried about this? Okay, but no, buddy. what I'm a little worried about is how they haven't done anything after breaking this top lane turret. So Broken Blade has had this 40 CS lead for about five minutes and he's not freezing someday. So he's not denying him any CS. He's not really counter jungling and he's not joining the rest of his team. So he's just splitting farm in a matchup where he sh has the potential to take a much larger lead. So I would have liked to see Broken Blade either leave and help, you know, participate in that fight in the red buff, right? Like get a few kills, really break this game open. Because the longer he doesn't do that, the higher the chances that someday comes back in the game. It's 5,000 gold right now. It's not currently a big threat. Or any threat. But after you use all those resources, to get Broken Blade so far ahead, you need him to use it. Oh, Ryoma, he gets himself away with a nice shockwave. It looked like they were going to be able to collapse on him, but now 100 Thieves looking to bite back. But here comes your paddle star. Nice stasis from Stunt to keep himself oh, alive. Going to be taken very low. Oh, Meteos with the whip on the Glacial Prison. And a big fight in the mid lane where no one dies and someday gets yet more CS back into this one. So a, a narrow miss for a couple of different reasons right there. Kabe actually almost goes down. So for, you, you know, take C9. Put put C9 where TSM right now is. And this is just like any of the games in the 3-0 that C9 handed to 100 Thieves to put them in this spot. But knowing the history of the split between these two teams and how hard it has been for TSM to actually close out victories, you can't help but get a little bit nervous. I don't know, man. I'm... I think they should have... <laughs> what it takes. I'm, I've played a lot of League of Legends in my day. I've been playing this game yep. for, for 10 years. I feel like most of those games where you've got this kind of a lead at 17 minutes in terms of gold, not a 1-0. But in terms of gold, you win most of those games. You feel like you can just walk it in. Yeah, I feel like you win most of those games. But 100 Thieves, yeah, you do. they're still, they're going to give it the old college try. Let's see what they can accomplish here. Sleepy Trouble Bubble down on the ground. Not going to find anybody. Well, somebody's not even here yet. Be aware of the but he might be looking to flank. Okay. If Ryoma lands a big shockwave, it's not gonna find much of anything. Dardock is exhausted. CC coming through. Stasis going down. Dardock grabbing the kill onto Stunt. As the Rift Herald is gonna be secured by someday it's of stolen. all people. Broken Blade is standing on top of it, trying to protect it. 100 Thieves do not have the chance to go in and actually secure the eye. Yeah, this is a Rift Herald <laughs> denial in both senses. Someday somehow just like stabbed it to pick up the last hit. 
the stab in the eye actually outsmites a jungler for how much damage it does. So you got to be able to be in position for that knockup. And TSM is likely going to get an Ocean Drake. So it's a small victory for TSM in terms of like net uh, assets that they're able to acquire yeah. with the kill on the Ocean Drake. But still probably a pretty useful denial by Hunter Thieves. Hunter Thieves at least, I guess, I'll give them a half because they didn't okay. get it. Granted, you, you didn't get it either. But that's still halfway in between where they wanted it to be. So yeah, I'll, I'll give that a half point. Yeah. It's a C it still plus. counts as not a Rift Herald for TSM. Yeah, C plus. Now, let's C see plus. if they can get anything else. Because the gold lead still keeps building. TSM still keeps taking more and more control over the game. The Callista has enough daggers in her inventory to just stabity stab everybody on the side of 100 Thieves. So we're going to be seeing mm -hmm. more attack speed coming out. We're going to be seeing more ability to move around. Because remember on Callista, attack speed is also mobility. Because the faster you attack, the quicker you can hop. So she'll be able to get all these spears in there. You can see that's how the farm goes. And Someday is still just trying to get these items built up. Has the Tabby, has the Bramble Vest, working towards the Black Cleaver as Kabe and Biofrost push up onto the Tier 1 here. After those first two turrets, they haven't been able to grab any more of these objectives away from 100 Thieves since. They are looking to try to grab that mid lane Tier 1, complete that outer ring. Yeah, and with the uh, Hurricane being completed, Broken Blade is ready for the team fights. Let's, let's think for a sec. We got... So the Drake game got started slowly by TSM. So we're 20 minutes in, and there's still three and a half minutes left on the Drake. So uh, 28.30 is about as quickly as TSM would theoretically be able to get Cloud Soul. Okay. Cloud Soul is always pretty good. Uh, very easily able to proc that move speed and just super zoom around. Looks like Dardock is either going Edge of Night or Umbral Glaive Rek'Sai, which is a little atypical, but... I don't hate it since he's 2-0 and, oh and he's looking to one-shot. And if TSM ends up winning this, it's going to look like a total slaughter. Yeah. Uh, because it has been a total slaughter so far. But I'll still say it kind of only takes one big fight just with uh, with how good the 5v5 of 100 Thieves look. If they get any, if they get the gold close and they can deny the Dragon Soul, it's still winnable for them, in my opinion. So a lot of tension in this game, weirdly. 100 Thieves will just continue trying to farm. It's still only a two-kill game in 20 minutes. Honestly, we're not putting up huge numbers in terms of this being a super exciting, fast-paced, high-octane game of Legends. It's just Callista doing this to her opponent yeah. for the entire Well, it's every lane. Like, Bjergsen's up 40 CS, just like his Broken Blade is up 40 CS. Really, the surprising CS difference is Bjergsen. Uh, the Broken Blade CS is actually expected. If you said hey, they're going to channel this top lane Callista, they're going to use first Rift, they're going to get first turret, and oh, by the way, Aatrox will be the same level and only down 40 CS. You actually take that. It's the rest of the game that is putting this uh, game currently over the top of TSM. Meteos still prowling around his own jungle, looking for something he might be able to do here. Dardoch does have the Tremor Sense to detect him there over the wall, so he's able to disengage there with Broken Blade. Broken Blade and Bjergsen, levels 13 and 14. Someday and Ryoma, levels 13 and 12. Not only is it that 40 mm. farm difference for Bjergsen there mid, it's also two levels up on his opponent. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, the second pick Zoe by TSM so far paying off. It's really what they used in part to get that first blood in the jungle on Meteos. But Someday's still looking to fight back. Remember, if you try to focus Dardock, it doesn't work because Broken Blade just saves him and then throws mm -hmm. him right back into the fight. Then he's able to use his own ulti to drop aggro once again. It makes it an incredibly difficult 2v2 because you have to either jump on a champion with infinite mobility or jump on a champion that has two separate aggro drops. Very hard decision making to go through and find a successful way out. And it results in them having to back away as TSM take their third turret of the game in the bottom lane tier two. That is a six and a half thousand gold lead yeah the fact that dardock is the ultimate partner for broken blade also makes me more okay with that serrated dirk he has sitting in inventory like you can be a little bit more of a squishy rex size since you do have the callista alt for assistance and hunter thieves is just conceding everything they are doing everything they can not to die thinking that they have this late game scaling advantage but the the make or break fight is approaching it's it's not this next Cloud Drake. It'll likely be around 27 minutes. If that, because 
with Double Bork and Rageblade Varus, I really think TSM, after this next Cloud Drake, need to start forcing Baron stuff. Yeah. They need to start clearing out Vision, and that's how they can get, I mean, maybe even a perfect game. <laughs> like, in all the way this series has gone, they have no deaths, they have all their turrets. Technically, a Rift Herald got stolen away, so let's call it a no-hitter rather than a perfect game. Okay. But they, they have done everything right, so to speak making the 7,000 gold lead a thing at 23 minutes. And not just the two Bork users with the extra Rage Blade on one to take down the Baron, but you've also got Zoe, which is one of the best you better get the hell away from here champions for keeping your opponent off mm -hmm. of an objective that you could ever have in League of Legends. Incredibly potent composition for contesting these neutral objectives. As over the wall he goes, Paddlestar on to Meteos will take about one third of his health away, but remember that is through the Frost Armor. Huh. As Meteos is now rooted up, more damage going to be coming through. Utilizes the ulti, having a flash away now. Dardock once again going to be saved, thrown right back into the Hunter Thieves lines. A kill onto Cody Sun, a kill onto Sun, a kill onto Rioma. Sunday runs away. Oh, I don't think this is going to work out too well at all for a Broken Blade. Continuing to try to chase after Meteos. Someday will be the last man standing here as Meteos will meander off to the left side of the map there. Makes a liar out of me. There's two alive, but I don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference. TSM over to Baron. And that's exactly the type of fight they wanted. I didn't think with the way Hunter Thieves had been conceding for 23 minutes that they would try to contest Drake number three, the one that doesn't give over the soul, but maybe they thought they could get TSM through the right corridor and find an initiation. They clearly could not. And that's a 10,000 gold lead by 25 minutes. That is surely a lead that they're able to close out with. I don't see how on earth they would. <laughs> I I know that you're you're trying to be very cautious and warn everyone, hey, we've seen them throw leads like this before. We have to be careful. Always expect the unexpected, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think at this point you actually have to unplug your keyboard and use a PlayStation controller if you want to lose this game from this point in time. This is a Baron buff. This is the, you've got the two drakes, yeah, they just got the cloud drake, but that's no big deal. You've got these champions that are so incredibly powerful on these massive item spikes, and it just seems like it's time to walk it in. It, it does. They did delay the cloud soul, so they wouldn't be able to get it until 35 minutes. So if they can't get a good initiation, which they still have to be clever about the way they initiate, they're leaving the door somewhat ajar for, for 100 Thieves to get back in. I'm, I'm willing to call I, I know it seems like I'm joking. I'm not even willing to call it a jar. I, I, I will call it unlocked. Unlocked. <laughs> they didn't lock the door. This is 10,000 gold okay. in 20 minutes, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 10,000. Yeah. It's a lot of gold. It's a ton of gold. I just, I, I haven't seen that much Callista top, right? And like, it's just, and you haven't seen that much Edge Knight Rek'Sai. <laughs> no. But I have yeah. seen a lot of Orianna MF. Sejuani, Nautilus, team fight Wombos. So, like, there's still a chance this happens, uh, but it's it's getting slimmer and slimmer by the minute. Let's see if TSM can finish what they've started here. Dardock is the focus at first. He is taken very low, nearly taken down, but close on the counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Stunt now sleepy, not going to fall here either. The turret is gone, and topside. The turret is also nearly removed, I believe, just barely still standing there as Broken Blade put the auto attacks into that one. Yeah, Broken Blade just standing strong in that side lane. Uh, Bjergsen still just looking for picks throughout the jungle. A, a near miss by 100 Thieves. If they weren't 10,000 gold down, you could see that Team 5 might have worked. But <laughs> they currently just only. do not have the damage to close out these targets. If only. <laughs> TSM have 30 more seconds of the Baron buff. They will be pushing up here in the top side as well as having Biofrost and Kabe escorting in a minion wave there at mid lane. Top side inhibitor exposed. Mid lane inhibitor will be taking damage from this juiced up cannon minion. And I'm not really sure what the play is here for 100 Thieves other than hope TSM just gets a little bit too hypey. Go for the punish. Broken Blade firing off those auto attacks here. Again, just keeping that cannon minion buffed up. Five seconds left of the Baron buff. You can see 100 Thieves thinking about it. They gotta know that buff is running out here in a couple of moments. Sleep down onto Stunt. Piercing Arrow will find him for a little bit of bonus damage, and the Baron is gone. So in a sense, they withstand it. They hold all their inhibitors, and they continue to scale up, and it is still 
the Cloud Soul that needs to be slowly worked towards by TSM. I, I like that uh, Kabe seems to be moving a bit more towards the AP build on Varus. I think that's really crucial for cutting through Meteos, who's stacked a lot of max health. There's just an absurd AP ratio on the percent max health damage from the Varus Blight, which when... I think it was Zven actually finished a death cap. He can do, you can actually do like 45% of someone's max health with three stacks Blight and detonating it with your E or your Q. Oh yeah, it's a clutch. Once you finish your like pseudo AP Varus build. So I uh, actually really like this as a Varus build that maybe could go late because TSM is hoping for a little bit of late game insurance in case they're not able to close out this game because gold leads while there is an absolute value of 11,000, 10 and a half thousand right now, is more about percentage differences in terms of power so right. this is the stage of the game where most of the standing gold is gone tsm has already grabbed it all so unless they're getting more kills it's hard to expand the percentage much higher at this point and if ryoma gets death cap uh and i know we're doing a lot of these if buts and ands because literally hunter thieves has zero kills but if he lands a big shockwave uh, there's not that much MR on the side of TSM. Or, or, or the arrow plus if he gets one shot, then maybe they just get two inhibs and win the game. When you have two long range abilities that are both capable of chunking out half an opponent's HP, sometimes some wild things can happen here in League of Legends. <laughs> and that's going to be a mid laner down and a top lane inhibitor taken as the cost. Chains of Corruption over the wall. They find their way onto the Hunter Thieves. All right. Someday going to be killed off. His first death of the game. Some days the double kill over to Kabe and TSM are on the victory march. Shut down on to Dardock, his first death of the game. The only kill that 100 Thieves has managed to find here for themselves. 10 seconds left until Ryoma spawns. Perfect game is not to be. TSM wins a big fight in the base and they move on to yet another Cloud Drake. That was... Just good opportunistic play from TSM. Bjergsen landed the pick on Ryoma initially. And then Kabe, who has just gotten really big throughout this game, lands a good ultimate to get more damage down on 100 Thieves. And I think they're kind of pushing him into panic mode here a little bit. Knowing the Cloud Drake just went down, I'm expecting 100 Thieves to to do something around this Baron. I mean, you kind of have They're to. trying to clear out vision early and get a good early setup, I think. It's time for the YOLO play. You're down two inhibitors. You're down 12,000 gold. The enemy's on soul point. It's time to just go in, try to make something happen. Yeah, you got a 1% chance of it working, but if you let them take the Baron again, you've got less than that. So let's see what 100 Thieves have up their sleeves here. See if there's anything left in the tank, or if we are 100% without a doubt going to those silver scrapes. TSM with control over all neutral territory here in the map. Baron is alive. 100 Thieves hanging out in the top side of the jungle. Bjergsen over the wall. We will not find anyone there with the Sleepy Trouble bubble, but this should be a sign for TSM to safely move yep. through this area and establish vision. Yeah, I mean, they even have Broken Blade down bottom uh, keeping Someday at bay to prevent a 5v5. I think TSM should just be... I think they can just do Baron, honestly. I don't think 100 Thieves can check. There's waves of super minions crashing by. At most, they would hope to kill Broken Blade's Callista. There's a chance TSM is waiting a little bit for Baron as well, so it coincides better with the Cloud Soul spawn, uh, just to, to make sure that works out. But really, I think it should take Baron, utilize these two waves of super minions, and then try and end the game on the third. Ooh. But they're still fishing for Zoe plays. Actually, Dardock is is uh, split pushing. They're, okay. they're doing something Split push else. lethality. Rek'Sai is here to end the game when no one else will. Dardock, he's got here they come. the Nexus turret low. They do manage to take it out. Kabe and Biofrost are here as backup. It's a 3v5 for the moment, and the CC comes down. Biofrost immediately prepared with the save. Stunts there on the front line, gonna be taken low. However, the Gargoyle Stone Plate will keep him healthy enough. Bullet time goes out, but Biofrost walks out of the way. Stun is gonna be killed by Bjergsen. Biofrost continues to hop out, is. and Dardock grabs a lot of damage, a lot of CC, and that's all they needed. A double kill for the jungler, a triple kill, and an ace for TSM. They will end the game here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to game number five.
Whew, if you tuned in now, you'd think, oh yeah, just another TSM snowball. <laughs> 13 kills to one. But the story of this series has been absolutely wild. And TSM, they called their shot coming into this fourth game. They said, we're not going to pick this scaling stuff because our late game has actually been pretty bad. Mm -hmm. We're just going to go all out. Counter picks galore, power picks galore. We're throwing in the Callista top. We're doing lethality Rek'Sai. And they do close it out soundly in 32 minutes. If you look at this game in a vacuum, TSM, everything was good. They, they weren't too slow. They didn't give opportunity for 100 Thieves to come back. The one nitpick would be, oh, they didn't stack Dragon Soul enough, but it's because they continually extended this gold lead. Everything was solid. The question now becomes, how do we hit back in this all decisive game five, hundred thieves just lost, so they will be the ones with side selection moving into this last game, and I can't wait. I think it's going to be the most interesting draft as well because hundred thieves have banned the same three champions in rotation one for these first four games, but now you have to think mm. about Zoe. Now you have to think about Callista. You have to think about that fourth game, and I'm excited to see what changes, if anything, or who knows, maybe we'll have a second salty run back here in the same series. Anyway, <laughs> we're going the distance, but before we go to the break, we must abide by the sacred principles of tradition. We are going to get a helping of the Game 5 Anthem, Silver Scrapes. Soak it in, breathe it deep, and we'll catch you right back here shortly after. Welcome back to TSM 100 Thieves. And gentlemen, I knew something was missing in my life, but I didn't know until now 
that it was Silver Scrapes. It was game five. We got our first five game series in the postseason here, and it is between TSM and 100 Thieves after the momentum, in all honesty, just swung squarely in the other direction there with a very dominant TSM victory in game four. Let's break it down how it happened. Probably I'm going to start yeah, with you. Yeah, so I think a big part of this is TSM got Zoe, so they got a priority pick for Bjergsen, and then they got the Kalista, which honestly I think we all forgot about as a big counter pick in top lane because not many people other than Cloud9 have been playing it uh, in North America, so they pulled it out here and they actually had a really dominant game. Yeah, shown by Licorice before, they found success with it. Mark, what are your thoughts on, on this uh, draft switch up here for TSM showing that Kalista in the top lane for Broken Blade and for it to re result in such a landslide well, victory the way it did? Well, I think this is why we were kind of talking about Broken Blade at the top of the day was his deeper champion pool in some sense. And someday we know someday can play anything, but at least on stage, she's stuck to the main couple champions. Uh, we've now seen Pantheon and Kalista back to back. And so there is this feeling that you never know what Broken Blade is going to bust out. He's been doing pretty well in lane these last two games. So I, I'm curious to see where 100 Thieves try to limit him because he does seem to be the one that they're mostly keying off of. Without a doubt, that top lane has been a contentious matchup all series long. We've seen both teams throw their fair share of new picks into the top lane to try and shake things up. Azale, I'm, I'm coming to you for final thoughts on this game four before we look at game five, the do or die, the make or break for both these teams to move forward in the playoffs. I mean, playoffs. at the end of the day, this this game four was, you know... The, Did we lose Azale? Oh, no, I, I'm still here. Perhaps you can't hear me. You should be able to hear me now. I am, oh, there sure we go. Exactly. Oh, there he is. There he is. All right, um, he's back. He's back i thought i thought you just didn't like my question <laughs> right, i refused to answer um i mean at, at the end of the day they succeeded where they had failed in the previous two games right I, I do think that they had the opportunities to to pull off the same sorts of things in the previous games but they failed to execute this game they actually were very well coordinated in their play around top side they were able to snowball that and they just straight up won their lanes it wasn't just about the individual laning performance there but while you know broken blade was up 20 even up to 40 cs they're up 20 plus CS mid lane, 20 plus CS bot lane. And when you win every single lane and you have an advantageous early jungle matchup, it becomes very easy to snowball the game. So that is what this game came down to. And I'm just excited to see, do they have anything really tricky for us in game number five? Because as you said, they've shown us the Pantheon, they've shown us Kalista. Clearly they still want to play, you know, the Syndra and, and the Zed and the Zaya and these champs. So if 100 Thieves is going to continue to focus banning what they have the entire series long, then things like Kalista will remain open and TSM will have the flexibility to go to some of these counter picks. I'll only ever get more excited when I see teams seemingly ramping up throughout the course of a best of five. And I think that game four is kind of a, a marker for TSM in stepping up here when the pressure is on. Mark, let's transition now to game five be, because you can almost just put those first four games in the rear view mirror. Yes, you're going to draw you know, on some of the learnings from them, but this has become a best of one. For both of these teams, it's like we're squarely back in the regular season. It's one and done. You win, you're in, you, you lose, you're out out and and you're you're sidelined till summer so 100 thieves with side selection they go blue what do you want uh, to see? I, I don't know because so much of this series is about like execution in that one specific game this is the has been tsm's uh kryptonite it's just being able to do the same thing game after game so i feel like if i'm 100 thieves I, I have been doing the largely the same draft every time on blue side. I think they want it again. Maybe something a little bit stronger in the early game than the Sejuani, like the J4 that they had initially in the first game or something. Uh, but other than that, I fully expect them to go back to a heavy, heavy team fight focused comp with some sturdiness in the early game to get them to that point where TSM starts to make these bigger mistakes. The last little thing I that in, just save somebody's pick for later, please. Yes. It feels like <laughs> that is... What TSM's game plan is going to be start to finish in the entire series, if you allow Someday to save his pick for later, to throw more bands towards Broken Blade in the second round, and to protect his pick, you know, even if they save last pick for Broken Blade, you're then going to have a more protected pick. You're going to have the ability to hopefully match pressure up on that top side, because both times TSM won, it's through dominating in that top side, it's through putting the numbers up there, winning 2v2s, winning 3v3s. If you stop that, what else does TSM have? Bot lane's not going to do anything. Yeah, pro Probably, I have to assume that TSM is going to be very happy with the draft and the game that they just ran, and so might be looking to kind of emulate some of that here in Game 5. Uh, 
But continuing on this 100 Thieves trend, when you look at the most dominant game for TSM being the early focused, lane winning, and run it over game, while we've been talking about TSM's difficulty in closing games out, now where do you sit for 100 Thieves? Do you have to protect yourself against getting run over? Or do you call that a fluke and say, let's keep indexing late and just make sure that we can win the macro? Well, I mean, I think, yeah. So 100 Thieves losses were that big team fight top where they lost early. And then now this like Kalista top building this gigantic advantage and someday not really being able to play the game. Since I think those are two things they can kind of control a bit better. Like I'm not going to say that 100 Thieves is not worried, but they at least know, like, TSM hasn't shown they can close the game well. They got Baron at, like, 24 minutes that last game, so that's a pretty easy close once you get that big of an advantage. So, 100 Thieves, I think, is looking at, like, if we get a even teamfight comp, they won teamfights 4k gold down earlier in the series, so I think they can win an even game or a slightly behind game. So they just want to, yeah, not get run over super hard, and I think with these new picks coming in, they can do that. But the issue I have is, if I'm TSM, I'm still pretty worried. Because, yeah, if I don't Why get that, that Baron during the 20 to 30 minute mark, and I go to 30 minutes with the 5k gold lead, I don't know if I can win if I'm TSM. <laughs> so it's like, I'm kind of yeah, getting like, no, I need the Baron a... early, please. That is so sad. You're putting well, the let's, 5k let's... up at 30, and it's like, yeah, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> oh. I, I feel like that's why the Kalissa pick is actually so great for them, because it allows them to brute force objectives a little bit harder uh, with how she can stack up her... her uh, Spears in them and then rend them all out. So I I wouldn't be surprised if Kalista isn't taken early. That uh, I don't know if they can free up a ban on blue side for it, but at least in the second phase, I think 100 Thieves probably want to get rid of that. Even when it went in the bot lane and it didn't work out perfectly, it still gave them a pretty big advantage to yeah. play around. Uh, well, as we're we're narrowing in towards uh, game five game time, I do want to put you all back on the spot because all three of you did predict the TSM outcome here in this series. Two of you over the course of four games and one of you with the five. That would be probably up top. There's still an opportunity for that one to ring true. Uh, but Mark, Azale, how much confidence do you guys even still have in TSM? Are you starting to rethink uh, the prediction altogether? Uh, and that at this, some point, like, <laughs> I, drew, I drew this. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, I oh lord! <laughs> I tried to flip flop my prediction at some flopper. point. Uh, uh, I still, I actually incredible. think I'm still going to stick TSM despite that fact. Uh, I, I think that they have kind of figured out that they need to index more to the early game, not just with the top lane picks, but also around Bjergsen. And there are enough in the meta that he should find one. I, I'm going to be honest. It, okay, yeah, it, it feels well, like a bit of a coin flip. It just go feels ahead, like, yeah. some, you know, you, you yeah. get a little bit of, of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? It's like, you know, which which TSM are you going to get? Are you going to get the one that is able to execute cleanly on the early plays and then snowball a game as we know they can do? Or do they not create that big advantage early game and then they just flounder and look hopeless come late game? So it, it really is hard to know. And, and I, that's why I'm so keen to actually watch the draft and, and see what they're going to give us. Yeah, we may not know what kind of a game we're going to get, but we are getting a Game 5 in our first of this postseason as 100 Thieves and TSM enter back onto the Rift to do battle for their playoff and postseason lives. We are going to head to another quick break for competitive integrity, and then we're going to toss it right back over to Captain Flowers and Jat to take it all the way home. Thank you so much.